I was like, I don't need to explain to anyone, but here's what happened. When I got the message, when Putumogeni passed on, there's a group called Mbongeni Tribute. It's a group that we've had for the past five years. It's all the cast members in that group, right? So, when I heard about the passing, we were talking with the group, and I was telling the group, you know, he just sent me a message like this a few days ago, and I wanted to share it with them. So in the, in the evening, that evening, I share the message. But you know when you search, you, you type Mbongeni, and then you send. There's a few Mbongenis that come, but because my mind was not okay, I just sent it to Mbongeni. I think the, the group didn't even get the message. Then I let it go. In the morning when I posted, I went to Mbongeni's um, uh, called message. And I sent the same message that I said, I thought I'd sent to the group. Just for the sake of you guys seeing the message. Not realizing that it, it, it is a message that looks like I have sent it myself to Mbongeni. I'm not a cow, bitch. Listen, I'm gonna make you sweat, make you wet, make you wet, wet, wet. I'm gonna make you sweat, baby, baby, kiss me, man. No pressure. Vault. Vault. Unlocked. Hello, what is up you dazzling diamonds and the others? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Linda Kyle and this is The Vault. Anyway, you guys, let's jump straight into this video. Alrighty then, you guys, before we jump into this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channels. My other channel is called Linda Kyle Dazzling Diamond where I post vlogs and everything there is real and very, very grimy type of situation. So you probably want to go watch, all right? In this video, I want to talk about what happened with Usomizi when Uba Bongeningema passed away. Now, apparently, allegedly, Usomizi sent himself a WhatsApp um, lying to the public and saying that Umbongeningema had sent him this message where he was praising him and just um, showing him so much love and gratitude for, I guess, who Zomizi is in his life. Which I find kind of strange because not so long ago, Umbongeningema is the guy that did Isarafina, right? I don't know if he wrote it or directed it, but he was part of that, a big part of that. When the cast of E. Sarafina came back together after years, Somizi wasn't there. I don't know if you guys remember this, but I most certainly do. Because, you know, I remember these type of situations. So I just find it kind of weird that Obong um, Eningem was sending him this very lovey-dovey message right before he passed away. I don't find anything wrong with that happening if it did. But... The message that he showed us or that he posted was telling, you know. His was green and not gray. There was no double tick or even a green, the blue one. And it was very quick. If that indeed did happen, why didn't Somizi post that message before finding out that Umbongeningem had passed away? Why not just... You know, say, oh, this is so sweet since it was so lovey-dovey. Why wait till the guy passes away? Which gets me kind of thinking. Now it gets me into my conspiracy mind. With these people, like Abba Somizi, so. Not to say that Somizi is one of these people. I'm saying like. E.G. type of situation. That when people pass away, they want to be the. They want to be all up in the mix. And apparently, allegedly, these type of people are the ones that are mixed up and intertwined in sacrifices and stuff like that. Why do you want us to know or see this thing after the passing of this guy? Why do these people want to be involved after somebody passes away? Why not acknowledge this person or say, oh, wow, this is a great message while the person was still alive, while you still had a real chance? Why? There's no pictures or any video evidence to show that they were so close and so lovey-dovey. I guess maybe they can have a private relationship in the background. But I'm just saying, 1 plus 1 is not making 2 at this point. It's making 311. 311. If you, if you get, you get. Right? 
it's very disgusting to use other people's death for a way for you to trend or be relevant. So, Mizi, focus on your your kid's brand. Focus on what you're focusing on. You've got a lot of things going for you. Kind of makes you wonder when all these celebrities are just perishing and, you know, Laba that want to be involved after they perish. You must look at them because Labo they have been connected to stuff groups and dingy groups in the dark cults and you know sacrifice sacrifice type of situation because why why would you do that and then he makes the matter worse a few days later he comes out to then clarify the situation where he said absolutely nothing in the bathtub that's how unserious it was why was it so serious for you to post that thing if it was so unserious when you had to do a response when you got caught out why always look at the people that want to be involved in people's deaths death videos and stuff like that look at them look at them because calling the off calling the off right acknowledge me people were saying that oh zahara didn't get her flowers while she was still alive acknowledge me while i'm still alive give me my flowers while i'm still alive Post that message that I sent you while I'm still alive. Not when I pass away because now it's a you thing. But why is that? Why are you benefiting from that? Why do you do that kind of shizness? These people are shady. In my opinion. This is just my opinion. Right? So Mizi came out to say that, oh no, there was a group chat, but it didn't send. I think we all know how WhatsApp, how WhatsApp works. We know how it works. We're not stupid. But that's the thing about the higher ups or celebrities or influential people. They really think that we are all ditzy blondes. We can wear blonde wigs. But we're not ditzy blondes. Right? So we all have the have duh. I just find it very disturbing when they do that kind of shit. And you're so big. This is how you want to start the yeah, this, these are the things that you're doing. Always question why why and then he gave a, a half ass explanation as to why that didn't even make sense and then still say to people i don't care believe what you want to believe look at these people what sacrifice sacrifice season uh, i'm just saying i'm not saying that he's one of them i'm just saying especially when their colleagues perish and in a corner, so Mizzy wasn't invited, apparently, allegedly, to that Serafina reunion thing. You know, people do get mad. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not saying anything about anything. Why not just put one and two together? Right? Anyway, if you guys haven't already, please do like, share, and subscribe to this channel and my other channel where you can watch my vlogs or just my daily updates or my goofy shit type of situation. Um, yeah, baby, baby, we in 2024, baby, we finally here, I don't know if you guys can feel it, there's something in the air, this year is just different, Maggie Kaula this year, it was different, the vibe was just different, and till today, the vibe is still different, I feel this energy, and I've been saying to you guys, since last year, which I, man, feel it coming in the air, and I feel it, right? Um, I wish you guys all the best of luck for 2024 and I most certainly wish myself all the best of luck, right? <laughs> but it's 2024, you got to do more and yeah, we're here for it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. I absolutely do love you. Bye. And don't do these fake what's up, what, what's and then stop it with only acknowledging people or claiming apparently allegedly you are being acknowledged by people in their passing. Let them be relevant while they live. Run taller. Because you look shady. You look you look thirsty. Yo, we yeah. Now I know. Sayan Buji, Zoto Abantu, this guy. There's a lot that's going to come in 2024. It's a good thing for me because I'm gonna have content. But uh Sazobon. Alright, God bless you guys. Bye.